Hi there, this is Coach Ikram, and welcome to the first of two videos on periodic trends. Before we start talking about the actual trends on the periodic table, we have to talk about the backbone concepts of why we have trends on the periodic table. And they're governed by two phenomena. The first is going to be called Z-effective nuclear charge, and the second is going to be called shielding. And we're going to talk about both those concepts in a little bit more depth, and then we're going to get into each of the trends individually. So the first phenomena is Z-effective nuclear charge. Breaking it down, nuclear charge is essentially the charge of the nucleus. Inside your nucleus, you've got your neutrons and you've got your protons. Neutrons are neutral, therefore the protons are the only thing affecting the positive charge of the nucleus. Z-effective nuclear charge is the pull and the attraction that those protons are going to have on the surrounding environment, which is the electron cloud and the electrons in it. So by definition, it's the overall force the protons in a nucleus exert on the surrounding electrons. The important thing to remember is that in one specific energy level, it doesn't matter which one, all the electrons in that energy level are going to be attracted to the nucleus equally. It doesn't matter if you've got one electron in that particular energy level, if you've got nine electrons in that particular, ener particular energy level, they're all going to be attracted to the nucleus with the same amount of attraction. Z-effective nuclear charge is going to be influenced by two things. The first is your atomic number, which should make sense because as you add protons to your nucleus, you're increasing the atomic number. And the second one is going to be electron repulsion. And you have to remember that electrons, as they're, you know, zipping around outside in the electron cloud, they're repelling one another as well, in addition to the attraction to the nucleus. The second phenomenon is called shielding. And this is the addition of entire energy levels that are going to end up going between the protons and the nucleus, that's that positive charge, and the valence shell of electrons. So a very crude way of looking at it, and this is kind of using a Bohr model, which isn't, again, accurate, but, but it works. If you've got your nucleus, and you've got energy levels, I'm only drawing part of them, these two energy levels are shielding the nucleus from the level with the valence electrons. And as you add energy levels, the important thing to remember is adding energy levels reduces attraction. And then in addition to that, the electrons are going to be repelling each other, which is going to further increase the distance between them. So the first trend we're going to talk about with these two is called the atomic radius, and it's exactly what you'd think. It's the radius of one atom. Atomic radii is measured in picometers, so one um, angstrom is 100 picometers to give you some perspective. It's going to be measured indirectly. We don't measure from one end of an atom to another, but instead we're going to measure from the center of one atom to the center of another one in a diatomic atom, or sorry, diatomic compound. So we got Cl or Cl, for example. So you're going to measure from the middle or the, the nucleus of one to the middle of the other. And that's going to be divided by 2 to get your atomic radii. Now, there is some error in that. It's not going to be exact. But since we use this method to measure the radius of all atoms when we're doing atomic radii, the error is so widespread that it essentially becomes irrelevant. So the trend, how do we actually look at it when we look at the trend of atomic radius? So let's look down here. And I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's look down here at this. Okay. If we think about the atomic radii trend going from left to right across the period, as you move from left to right, so starting with potassium, let's work with this energy level right here. As you move from left to right, you're in, you're starting with a larger atom for potassium. As you move this direction, you're increasing the atomic number because you're increasing the number of protons in the nucleus. Every single time you add another proton, you're increasing the Z-effective nuclear charge because the more protons you have, the more positive the, nu the nucleus is, and it's going to pull those electrons in closer. So as you move down, you're going to notice they get smaller and smaller and smaller because those protons are pulling those electrons in. Now remember, there's also an electron being added as you, as you move across the period and as you increase the atomic number, but Electrons are so small that they're not going to make much of a difference. So 
So your nuclear charge is going to increase. Every proton you add makes the nucleus more positive. So electrons are going to be pulled inward. So if we're practicing this, we've got potassium and krypton, which one has the larger atomic radius. Yes, you could theoretically look at this diagram and look at potassium and look at krypton. And you can tell visually that krypton has a smaller atomic radii than potassium. However, if you think about it theoretically, it should also make sense because there's only 19 protons in potassium and there's 36 in krypton. Therefore, those 36 protons are going to have a much higher Z effective nuclear charge, therefore pulling those electrons in closer. If you're looking within a group at the atomic radius, as you go down a group and you increase the, or you, you add another energy level as you go down each group, your atomic radius is going to increase. And the reason this is happening is you're adding an energy level each time. And as you add an energy level, remember shielding is going to start coming into play because the minute you add energy levels between that outer valence shell and that nucleus, you're essentially decreasing the attraction between those outer valence electrons and the nucleus. Therefore, they're not going to be hugging that atom as tightly. They're going to be able to be a little bit further away because that attraction has been reduced due to shielding. So every time you go down and add another energy level, the shielding is going to, to be such that those outer valence electrons are going to be further and further away from the nucleus. So remember, shielding. As the energy levels are being added, electrons are less affected by the pull of the charged nucleus. Therefore, they're going to be further away, and the electrons are going to be able to repel each other more. So if you're practicing, you have barium and magnesium, which one has the larger atomic radius? Barium's down here. Magnesium is right here, but if you think about it, magnesium's on a lower, its outer valence electron shell is on a lower energy level. Therefore, there is less shielding. Therefore, it's going to be smaller. So if you look at it on a very large scale here, you've got your, you're going across a period here, and as you add protons, you increase the effective nuclear charge, therefore hugging the electrons closer. And as you go down a period and you look, or down a group, excuse me, and you go down a group, you have to think about the fact that as you increase the number of energy levels, you're increasing the shielding and therefore allowing the atom to be bigger because those electrons are further away from the nucleus. The last thing to think about with um, atomic radius is the ionic radius trends. Um, and this is sort of a very kind of interesting concept. Cations, which remember are ions that formed a positive charge because they have lost electrons, will actually end up being smaller than their neutral atoms. And so if you're looking at this, the gray is going to be your ion and the blue is going to be your original atom. And you can see that the ion is much smaller than the original atom. The opposite is true for anions. Anions are the negative charged because they have gained electrons, and those are actually going to be larger than their neutral atom. And so again, the gray is the atom, and the color is going to be the ion size, and you'll notice that it's going to be much, much larger than its original neutral atom, and that's going to be true for all cations and all anions. And so ionic radius, the period trend for it, as you are moving along a period, okay, as your atomic number increases, the ionic radius of your cations and your anions, both of them, is going to decrease. In cations, the loss of the valence electron shell makes the atom smaller. So as you, because you're getting rid of that outer valence electrons, say for example calcium is going to get rid of those two or beryllium is going to get rid of those two electrons then all of a sudden you have one less shell so it's going to be smaller and in anions the increasing nuclear charge is going to pull all those electrons inward because you've added more electrons it's going to pull them it's going to pull them inward and it's going to therefore make them smaller as you go across the period as you go down a group as your atomic number increases as you go down the group the ionic radius is going to 
increase. In both cases, the reason this is happening is because of shielding. As you go down the group, again, you've got more energy levels between your valence electron shell and your nucleus. And that is the end of this video. We're going to start on first ionization energy in the next video. Hopefully this made um, some sense. Please make sure you rewatch the video, take good notes, and come to class with questions. Hope you enjoyed. See you all in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.